The Tuskegee Airmen were the first African-American military aviators in the U.S. Armed Forces. They fought for our country during World War II and against racism at the same time. And Douglas Embry from Indianapolis was a member of that revered group. Now, we learned that Embry died last week at the age of 92. Tonight, we wanted to share with you the Only in Indiana, where Kevin Rader and photographer John Whalen highlighted Embry's story. <laughs> That's it, baby. That's the best fighter plane we had. P-51 Mustang. All right. Yeah, buddy. 72 years have passed since Douglas Bembry. Yeah, buddy. Been all over on the road. Was Corporal Bembry. It brings that? back a lot of memories. In the 100th Squadron of the Tuskegee Airmen stationed in Italy during World War II. When you think about this time, the years you were over there, what do you think of? I don't like to think about it. A lot of people like to talk about it. Look, mister, this was no picnic. We, this was war. He was part of the ground crew, trained in welding and sheep. If it hadn't been for the ground crew, the planes never would have never would have gotten off the ground. Even now, at age 91, he remembers the sky being so full of bombers and fighter planes that they would literally blot out the sun. He also fondly remembers when then First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt visited the Tuskegee Institute and wanted to go up in a red-tailed trainer, and all the trainer pilots at the time were white. She pointed this guy and told him she wanted to take a trip. He said, well, uh, she pointed to a white guy. She said, no, I want him. And Eleanor climbed up in this two-seater and took a trip. Trainer. <laughs> she sure did. <laughs> yeah, buddy. He has all the medals and as a member of the Tuskegee Airmen was recognized by President George W. Bush. It only took 60 years to get that. Uh, we felt like we should have got it before, but, but it was, I'm, prou I'm proud of it. Yeah, I wouldn't take anything for it. We made a trip from southern Italy all the way to Berlin. And Hitler had jets. And with our props, we shot down three jets. And we didn't lose a fighter plane and didn't lose a mama. It's still a point of pride, but there is also a point of prejudice. When we were over in Italy, and everybody was shooting at each other, the Germans, the Italians, and everybody shooting, everybody was like brothers. But then, but as soon is we were coming back. And we looked up and saw that Statue of Liberty. I was black again. Some of his friends re-upped upon return. Corporal Douglas Bemery, would you like to re-up? I said, sir, get me bus fare to Atlanta, Georgia. I'm gone. <laughs> he would eventually land in Indianapolis, and now 50 years later... Want me to put my hand on the prop? His grown children would share this moment with him. Say cheese. As he looked over his pride and joy in a private hangar at Metropolitan Airport. So you happy, Daddy? Oh, sugar, I'm right at home around that thing. <laughs> I used to love that P-51. Don't let him fool you. As a red tail, he still does. That's right. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. It's the stuff of legend. Yeah, buddy. Kevin Rader, Channel 13, I would say. And here are the arrangements for Douglas Bemery, if you would like to pay your respects. His visitation will be this Saturday at 11 a.m. It's going to be located at the Barnes United Methodist Church here in Indianapolis. His funeral will also follow at noon. We no, thank him for his service. Mm -hmm.